Hello, uh, today we're going to be looking at expanding polynomials. Now, expanding polynomials is something you are all quite familiar with. GCSE, you're expected to be able to expand polynomials with indexes of two and three. But on this qualification, we're going to look to go a little bit further. Now, the difference when we're going to higher powers is we're going to use something called Pascal's triangle. Now, for this qualification, you're not expected to know Pascal's triangle. You're not expected to be able to regurgitate Pascal's triangle. It will always be given to you or the correct row that you need will be. So you're not expected to generate it yourself. We use Pascal's triangle when we are expanding something of a form a plus b to the power n. And Pascal's triangle provides us with the right coefficients for each term. So we would use the row dependent upon the power n. So if n was zero, we'd use that top row, n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, and n equals five, and so on. Now, if you look at the first question we have here, it says using this information, expand and simplify a plus two b all to the power four. So in this case, n is equal to four. So the row I'm interested in Pascal's triangle is this one here that goes one, four, six, four, one. So I'm just going to write that out, one, four, six, four, one. And that's going to generate the coefficients for the five terms, one, two, three, four, five terms, when I complete this expansion. I might as well start by writing those in for us. So I know my first term is going to be one multiplied by something, because my first coefficient is one. And then we're going to have four multiplied by something, and then six multiplied by, and then four multiplied by, and then finally one multiplied by. Okay, the next part of the expansion comes from the first term here. So in this case, the first term is a. Now what we do is we set the first term initially equal to the power outside the bracket. So we've got a to the power four. And then as we work along, the term stays the same, but the index decreases by one. So this then will become a to the power three, a to the power two, a to the power one and a to the power zero. Now, when we're looking at the second term in the expansion, this term, which in this case is 2b, will have index numbers again, but they'll work in the opposite direction. So they'll start with zero and increase up to four. So we're going to have multiplied by 2b to the power zero. And it's important that that 2b goes in a bracket. And then we've got 2b to the power one. And then we've got 2b to the power 2. We've got 2b to the power 3. And finally, we've got 2b to the power 4. And what we will do ultimately at the end is we will add all these expressions together. OK, now, when we have situations where we have a slightly more complex term, like we have here where we need to put it in a bracket, I always think it's worth working out what each of these brackets is underneath. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to expand each of those brackets. So 2b to the power 0 is just 1. 2b to the power 1 is just 2b. Now 2b to the power 2, remember, that means 2b multiplied by 2b. So I don't just square the letter, the variable. I have to square the coefficient as well. So in this case, it'll become 4b squared, 2b cubed will give me 8b cubed, and 2b to the power 4 is going to give me 16b to the power 4. Okay, now we can work everything out. We have got 1 multiplied by a to the power 4 multiplied by 1 is just a to the power 4. Now we have got 4 multiplied by a cubed multiplied by 2b. Remember, we deal with our numbers. 4 times 2 is 8. So we get 8a cubed b. Next, we have 6 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 4. Oh, sorry, it's not a 9, is it? That's my, my bad writing. That's 6 multiplied by a squared multiplied by 4, which gives me 24a squared b squared. And then we have 4 multiplied by a to the power 1 is just a. So 4 multiplied by a multiplied by 8b cubed. So 4 times 8 gives me 32ab cubed. 
And then remember, a to the zero is one. So that's one times one. We'll multiply by one. Multiply by 16b to the power four. Gives me 16b to the power four. We'll just write that on the answer line. Nice and clearly. And there we go. There's our solution. So three marks. Um, we'd get three marks for the correct answer. If we didn't have the correct answer, if we had three of these terms here fully correct, we would get two marks. If we didn't get that mark, if we didn't get, we didn't have three fully correct, we would get one mark if we have done the correct substitution. So that first line is important. Okay, so if we look at the next question, it says using the information, expand and simplify 3a subtract 2b all to the power three. So in this case, I'm interested in this row here of Pascal's triangle, one, three, three, one. So I'm gonna start by writing that down. One, three, three, one. And then I'm just gonna move my sheet up a little bit. Because that's the only information I really need from Pascal's triangle. So just like we did before, I know my first term is gonna be one multiplied by something. And then my second term is gonna be three multiplied by something. Third term is also three multiplied by something. And then my last term is gonna be one multiplied by something. Just like we did before, we're gonna start with the first term in the expression in the bracket. So that's in this case is 3a. So it's gonna be 3a to the power three. And then the power is gonna decrease for each term. So it's gonna be 3a squared, 3a to the power one and 3a to the power zero. And then I will do my second terms. Now this is where we need to be really careful because of the negative sign. So it needs to be negative 2b to the power zero. Negative 2b to the power one negative 2b to the power 2 and negative 2b to the power 3. And just like with the previous one and every one, we will have to add some addition signs. Now, just like I've done before on the previous example, I'm going to work out the brackets first. I'm going to expand them brackets first. So 3a cubed, remember, means 3a multiplied by 3a multiplied by 3a. So that's going to give me 27a cubed. 3a squared is going to give me 9a squared. 3a to the power 1 is just 3a. And 3a to the power 0 is 1. Now working out the second batch of brackets. Negative 2b to the power 0 is 1. Negative 2b to the power 1 is negative 2b. I will leave that in a bracket. And the reason I've done that is because of that negative sign. It helps me remember I'm multiplying by a negative number. Negative 2b squared means negative 2b multiplied by negative 2b. So squaring a negative gives me a positive. So in this case, I will get 4b squared. And then finally, negative 2b cubed is negative 8 b cubed. And I'll put that expression in a bracket again, just to remind me. And just so I don't forget them, I'm going to copy across those coefficients as well. So when I do my final simplifying, I don't forget those. So now we've got 1 multiplied by 27a cubed multiplied by 1 gives me 27a cubed. And then got 3 times 9 is 27 times by negative 2. So 27 times negative 2 is negative 54 a squared b. We then have 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4, which is 36 a b squared. And then finally, 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by negative 8 will give me negative 8 b cubed. And there's my final answer. So 27 a cubed subtract 54 a squared b plus 36 
AB squared, subtract 8B cubed. Just like before, we're looking at three marks if we have the fully correct answer. In this case, we'll be looking for three of the four terms correct to get two marks. And if we haven't got that, but we've correctly substituted, we could get just the one mark. Thank you very much.